Now class, our final topic, logic gates. I really love being talked to patronizingly, like I am the student and you are the teacher. It is I, Vladimir Garoshki, who is the master. Howdy, y'all. I'm around the wheel. You're watching Chips Challenge Return of Jafar, and we're starting with what I believe is the last lesson level. That's not called Don't Panic. That was in Lemmings Redux. Read the rules carefully, clues carefully, and think about them. Melinda says, I'm ready for this. I can do it. Step aside, Chip. This calls for real brains. <laughs> not that mushy mashed potato you call a man brain. This is Melinda time. We're gonna, Melinda is the one who's going to learn the logic gates. So lesson seven, here we go. This, this, I believe this is the last of the tutorials if memory serves. Be sure to read all the clues carefully. This may seem easy, but it gets complicated. This button controls one of the inputs to the AND gate. It needs to be pressed to be on, like so it would seem, but you know, we have to keep it on with the block. Push the blocks onto the two buttons. This door is connected to the output of the AND gate. It will open when its input is on. This button controls one of the inputs to the AND gate and it needs to be pressed to be on. So that's a lot of hint boxes to just say, both of these buttons need to be pressed for this door to work, as you can see by the fancy schmancy wiring. So a black button means I forget what. The black button controls the input to the inverter. It's normally on, it needs to be pressed to be off. This is an inverter. When its input is on, its output is off. And when its input is off, its output is on. So this takes an input that is on, this little triangle, and it turns whatever is going on through it off, like such. But again, we need the block to press it down. Pretty easy to understand, it would seem. Okay, so now what's happening here? Uh, the OR gate. This button controls one of the inputs to the OR gate. It needs to be pressed to be on. So back here we have the AND gate, which looks, which has a, uh, which has a square backside and a rounded front. And then the OR gate looks like it has a convex backside and a kind of tapered front. So, okay. So yeah, makes sense, all right. So, okay. Uh, when either of its inputs, it's on, is on, its output is on. Okay, so, okay, yeah, and same, okay, so with an OR gate, the OR, the OR kind of has an O shape on the back, the, man. Man, as if there wasn't enough to remember in this game already. Push the blocks onto the two buttons. What have we got here? Is this an AND OR? Both of its, okay, this is an, a NAND gate. NAND stands for not AND. Okay, so this is like, this is like Boolean Search 101, basically, right? This button controls one of the inputs to the NAND gate. Okay, so both of its inputs must be on to be off. Basically, just, okay, yeah, there we go, all right. I'm not gonna read all of the hint boxes. Uh, okay, let's see. This is one of the inputs to the XOR gate, ZOR gate, I guess. So if I push this off, yeah, there we go. Okay, so they're both pushed. Uh, this is an AND OR gate, but, okay, there we go, yeah. Kinda exclusive OR, okay. Its output is on when only one of its inputs. One and only one of its inputs is on. A lot of very precise reading to do here. And there is yet a fifth kind of logic gate. This is a latch gate. It has a capture input, a data input, and an output. I'm actually streaming on a latch gate right now. This is the capture input to the latch. When it's on, the output will be the same as the data on the other input. When it's off, the output stays the same as the last time the capture was on. This door is connected to the latch gate. The output of the latch gate, okay, so, all right, so. This is the data input to the latch gate. The state of this input is captured by the capture input above. Okay, so push this. All right, so. I'm a little confused as to what happened there. Uh, so if I push this off, it'll copy it. But, okay, but the last one... I hope there aren't too many levels involving this thing. I'm a little confused by it, to be honest. So what was that again? 
the state of this input is captured by the capture input above, which this is the capture input right here. When it's on, the output will be the same as the data on the other input. When it's off, the output stays the same as it was the last time the capture was on. I'll probably be kind of able to like fumble my way through this in a level, but suffice it to say, I'm a little... I just I just got off of work like my brain is a little not in the space for this right now So this is a timed thing. It looks like Step on the button until the number says zero. This is the increment input to the counter gate When its input goes from off to on it will go up. It will count up by one When the counter goes from nine to zero It will send a quick pulse out the overflow circuit a pulse is a short on signal this door is connected to the output of the counter, overflow output of the counter. It toggles when its input goes from off to on. This is a counter gate. It is using its increment input and its overflow output. So I gotta step on it enough times to basically get it to zero to overload it. But if I do it again, oh no, I just have to press it a bunch of times, okay. So same deal here it looks like. Uh, Step on the button until the number says nine. This is the decrement input to the counter. When it goes from off to on, the counter will count down by one. So yeah, same deal. Let's get it to nine and boom. So one gate, one type of gate, when it's at zero, it'll open. The other, when it's at nine, it'll open. Bunch of weird types of logic gates. I'm, I confess I'm not really looking forward to seeing how these are implemented, but I guess we should just get right to it. On and Off by Nick Laria. So yeah, there's gonna be, yeah, so look at all these branches, my word. But we have a lot of time to do this level, so let's get right to it. Okay, so they're just popping on and off all the time, all the time, all the time. So here we go. All right. Uh, Okay, all right, so now, okay, so there's like, okay, so there's various inputs turning on and off, okay, all right, very nice, okay, so we gotta go through and get the chips essentially, okay, all right, so the force floors change direction, lots of things going on here, okay, uh, okay, so this is not bad, just kind of, I guess, stay away from the fire, that would probably be the smartest move. Um, okay, we're gonna have to go around to get this chip, it looks like. Okay, very good. Very well done. Alright, so how many chips are there? There are 12. So, okay, we're just kind of moving through the level, trying to get the chips. Okay, so I kind of went out of order there for a little bit until I figured out what was going on. I like how the, I like how the switch door, the swivel doors, I like how they make the pop sound. Now, oh, hey, there's that blue key. Oh, I need to go get that. Actually, that's probably really important to beating the level. Uh, okay, yeah. We, okay, that's gonna take some doing to go around there. Okay, and then through there, I see a chip down here. Hey, some bonus points. All right, okay, this level is not so bad. I, it, it looks more intimidating than it actually is. Okay, we're gonna have to wait on this a little bit. All you gotta do is make sure that the, uh, okay. All you gotta do is make sure you get everything out of the labyrinth here, okay? That is the way to operate. I think we've gotten everything we can out of here. I'm gonna keep on oofing, brothers and sisters, until I... No, that that 100 points is probably not terribly worth it, I don't think. Uh, this one over here is, though, so let's go to it. Okay, I'm gonna have to cross the street. The fire ones are the ones that scare me the most. So now... I can go get those, those ice boots. Very good. And now I just kind of walk around the rest of the level in such a like a fashion. That's not too bad. A little bit of a long one, but also not hard. I like levels that look intimidating and then turn out not to be. This is this is a very good use of space. I just like I just like the whole design of it. Even the middle part is not too. Not too terrible. Glad I turned off those conveyor animations, though. That would have been... That would have made it probably just... That would have kind of taken it over the top, I do believe. So now we go over here... Yes! Let's open up all those gates. Look at you, ball. You're the one causing all this chaos. This is your fault. 
and I will never forgive you for it. First try. There wasn't a whole lot that could have killed us. There were some things that could have killed us, but I feel good about how we did on that one overall. That was a nice little benign introduction to, well, there were no logic gates even. It was just an on and off switch. Uh, Ghost Bridge by Andres Bog Anders Bogger. I don't think that's a name we've seen yet. So let's go ahead and... Okay, we're going to have to get... Let's see what happens here. Okay, so I cannot cross the bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, okay. Um, so he won't cross the water. Let's see what happens if I do this. I think he'll just kind of keep making his rounds here. Okay, so if I cross... Did he just eat the flippers? Yeah, he sure did. Okay, so something something happened there. Um, okay, let's put these in a place where he's pro presumably not going to eat them. Uh, and I'm going to keep this here. So this one block is all I have to help me. So he's going to go around the way there. No, he can't cross the water. Uh, so... So the ghost has to... I think... Wait, so does the ghost have to eat the flippers so it can use the water? Okay, let me... Okay, let's try that again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get these first. All right. All right, you go ahead and you do... I'm going to let you eat the flippers and see what that does. So the ghost has the flippers. It can enter the water now. Okay. Now I think I just have to... Well... Okay, now I think I just have to kind of wait on it. Okay. And it'll keep going various directions. Uh, it cannot hit the... Uh... It won't hit the exit square, and, okay, because it has flippers, it can't. So it'll keep doing its thing, really. Okay, so all I have to do is wait for it to do its thing, like, five times. I just have to let the ghost eat those flippers, and then it can walk on water, and now I'm totally free to operate. There we go. Not so bad a level, once you figure out, once you figure out that you have to give up control of the flippers. Uh, it's pretty easy from that point onward. Mush by another Nick Loria level. This another single screener too. This is fun. And we have we have squares that don't let us use a bowling ball on them. So yeah, it kind of looks mushy, but okay, so I'm safe here, but I can't walk on the dirt. So what am I going to do then? Push this up through here? Okay, yeah, that's looks safe, safe enough. Uh but I cannot go on that. What a, okay, oh, I have fire boots now. Ah, very good. That's that is a comfort indeed. A thing of fire is a joy forever. So I can go through here because I don't have... But now I'm stuck here. So where... Okay, it's figuring out where you can go. That seems to be the key here. So I've got the boots. Uh, these are not... Okay, so I can get this though. What does that do for me? Okay, I can get the bowling ball, but I can't go through there. Where do I want to unleash this bummer? Oh, no, I just swam right into the dang hole. Okay, well, now that I know what I'm doing, at least a little bit, I can go over here, and that'll clear that out. There we go. Maybe I should have done it elsewhere. Maybe I should have pushed it in a different direction, I'm thinking. But I do have them, so I can go ahead and collect that now. Let's see. Hopefully, pushing that into the corner didn't make too terrible a difference. But I want to... What does this... What does this do for me? So, if I go here, if I let go of the bowling ball, if I let, I, but I need a bowling ball, so maybe if I leave it, okay, let's leave it here first. Um, but if I drop it, I'll just take it with me, so maybe I need to do something else with it. If only Melinda could walk on dirt. Uh... And I can't drop it when I'm in the water. Uh, so what about just... Okay, I'm not actually dropping anything either. Uh, and I can't... I, that's because I didn't have anything on the... Well, hold on. Okay. Let's see what going through here gets me. Uh, a whole lot of nothing, actually. Uh, this is not good. I need to get through the... So I need to find the blue key. The blue key is somewhere... Is it underneath a dirt block or underneath a... I don't even see a blue key anywhere. I think I've messed up, though. I think I've messed up beyond repair. So I'm going to go ahead and 
take another whack at it. Okay, so let's let's push this up this time, and uh, let's go ahead and clear that there. I don't think that makes too huge a difference, but what am I not seeing here? I can't push this. I can't get onto there. I can't get onto that. Can I? Okay, wait a minute. Can I? I can't clear it out though. I think. Let me take the bowling ball over to here. Maybe the bowling ball is hit, or the key is hidden under the dirt. So if I just switch to here, uh, nothing though. Bummer. And I didn't mean to do that. Again, I'm just kind of moving around, being silly. What am I? What am I doing here? What am I? What am I missing? Is the is the blue key under a thing? I can't really. There are certain ways I can't really face. And I don't see why the key would be underneath a block of dirt, but honestly, I just don't see it anywhere else. I don't see it being in a different place. Um, okay, well, yeah, there's that. Oh, yeah, and she can just walk on ice. Yeah, like it ain't even a thing. That's right, because she has those handy-dandy boots. Let's go ahead and switch this around. Bummer. God, why do I keep walking in the stupid ice? This is... You're just not thinking, Roundy. What are you... What is your problem? What is your... What is your primary malfunction, sir? Uh, let's go around this. Um, I don't think a bowling ball can break a block of ice, can it? That was not something that was ever... Indicated to me in any way. Oh, it can! Okay. Alright, so, no, oh, there you have it. It is underneath the ice block. Interesting. So you can block, you can break ice with the bowling ball. Was that ever demonstrated? I'm not entirely sure about that one. And I still improved it, and still got a go bit buster. I thought I did worse on that level than, than kind of indicated. I feel like maybe tackling one more. I've been going for a bit here, but I think maybe be one more level will be a fun one. Dress code. We've got 70 seconds to get ourselves in dress code or they will not let us in the restaurant. No shoes, no service. Well, very well, fine then. Have it your way, Mater D. What a what a fancy pants. Okay, so I've got fire boots. That's that's a start. Let's go this way. Hey, we got a chip. All right. So we need to take a block from up there. Oh, having fire boots means I can walk on fire jets as well. Ha ha ha. So here we go. Fake wall. Why can't I go here? Oh, okay. Oh, is fire not the is fire not the starter? Let's uh let's go ahead and drop No. There's not really a good place to drop these, except and I can't drop them on this space. If I drop them on here will I die instantly? Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to see it. I just I just had to see if it would work the way I wanted. Okay, I'm going to actually... I'm going to start with another one. I'm going to go here and push it. Bummer. Oh, I thought there was a button there. Oh, I got to go get the chip first. There is a button there, but I have to go get the chip first. Okay. So that's just me being a fool. A foolish fool. So let's push it up the way then. All right. There it goes. All right, so we have ice boots now. So we can go on here and here and here. So if I drop these, I can go here. Okay, another chip. Okay, so I have all the chips now. That's an interesting way to operate, but now I need, okay. I think I can just get through here, right? Oh, there's a bunch of like bonusy type stuff if I go, okay. All right, well, yeah, there are bonuses to be had, but I don't think it's really all that important to get to them. Uh, yeah, let's just let's just say we beat the level and call it a day. That's satisfying for me. So they taught us all about logic gates, and then I think we only used them in one level. So, so you know, whatever. Uh, seems like kind of a last-minute thrown-in idea and implemented very weirdly. I could see some levels getting really, really tough if you leaned hard into the logic gate usage, but luckily that didn't happen today.
Maybe it will happen in the future, though. Who knows what the future holds when you're a chip-collecting bit buster? <laughs>